Hey guys, I'm Joyce. Welcome to my video diary. Today is Sunday, January 21st, 2024. I'm still sick. I feel like shit. <laughs> <coughs> um, I thought maybe today I would take advantage of my downtime and start up with my planning again scheduling weekly scheduling and uh, yeah that hasn't happened <laughs> and I don't regret it <laughs> I mean I just I just can't do it I got up this morning uh, ground up a rabbit for <coughs> for the cats and dogs fed everybody fed myself uh, loaded and started the dishwasher and I've been in bed ever since it's uh, four o'clock now uh, I guess that was quarter after seven that I got up this morning uh, it is, oh, my head aches it's full of snot <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I thought I would start up my planning again, and no. I even brought a book to bed. I'll show you the book. This book, well, it's in reverse on my screen, so I don't, I don't know if it'll be in reverse for you. Anyway, it's Super Immunity. By Joel Furman, Dr. Joel Furman. <sighs> I also have his book, Eat to Live. Um, or is it Eat for Life? I don't remember. He has two. He has one that is Eat for Life and another one that is Eat to Live. And I don't I don't know which is which. I only <coughs> I only have one of them, but I don't I don't remember which one it is. Anyway, I thought I would read, you know, I figure I have not been following that protocol 100%. Uh, I have been vegan for, geez, I think it's a couple years now um, because I had two bad colonoscopy results. Um, and that's what he recommends is no animal products let the gut heal um, where am I going with this ah <sighs> yeah I've been vegan for a couple years except for twice a year I go off protocol so for my birthday um, I don't remember what I did last year. I don't think I decided until I say last year. I don't think I decided until New Year's Eve 2022. 2022 to 2023. But anyway, so for my birthday, my brother and I went out for sushi. And then for New Year's this year, 2023 to 2024 um I had planned on having a steak <laughs> there's this really there's this place in uh I don't know if there's St. James or Cuba Rala I, I think St. James anyway Matt's Steakhouse they never look like they do much business, but a friend and I went there once and oh, it was so good. I mean, they served this salad. It was so fresh and, and simple and tasted so good. And the steaks were just incredible. So I thought I would be celebrating New Year's or going off my New Year's protocol. I'm not saying it right. Hopefully you understand what I mean. Um, thought I would be doing that there. 
and had forgotten that my friend that I was going to go with has become vegetarian. <laughs> and he does not have plans to go off protocol. <laughs> um, so I ended up eating a, a pizza because that's what the people I was hanging out with uh, New Year's Eve. That's what they were eating. And it was so disappointing. I mean, as much as I lo have loved pizza, it was just, it was so disappointing. <laughs> I mean, it was delivered, and by the time it gets to you, I guess depending on where you are, by the time it got to us, it was lukewarm, you know? And it's just such a letdown. <laughs> anyway, my point is, I think my point was, that I, even though I've been vegan for a couple of years, except for three days, okay, four days, because yesterday my neighbor offered, oh, my neighbor who is also sick, um, got the energy to um, cook dinner for himself, so rice and beans and uh, offered to share with me and I was like sure well I took a spoonful and I'm like oh this has salt in it salt is not in my protocol it's no animal no salt no sugar no flour and no oil well he hasn't been using salt either so he's been vegetarian as well as no salt and no sugar either. No added sugar. Okay, no added sugar or salt. So if he buys something like a can of green beans, it's going to have salt in it unless he gets it at like a health food store. But honestly, I don't think even the health food store has no salt uh, veggies. Actually, I don't think they have canned veggies at all. But anyway... And so he does, so he does get salt and he does get sugar when sugar is included in whatever he's already purchased. And both salt and sugar are in almost everything. So anyway, even when I looked at the bowl of rice and beans, it looked creamy and I thought, I'll bet there's cheese in this. <laughs> yep, there was cheese in it. So, I ate it anyway. I just, I wanted to eat. <laughs> and I didn't want to cook it for myself. And I felt like shit. So, anyway, that makes four four days in the past two years that I've gone off protocol, <laughs> which I think is pretty damn good and not the reason that I'm sick. <laughs> However, not following this protocol 100%, which includes not just eliminating those items that I mentioned, but also focusing on eating really nutrient dense foods, high nutrient foods and avoiding toxicity. For example, rice, a lot of rice, except for white rice, a lot of rice has some level of arsenic in it because, as I remember, I could be wrong, but the way that rice is grown, um, which I believe is the water, the soil is saturated with water. They're called rice paddies, right? They're kind. It's they're kind of like grown. A rice is kind of like grown in swampland, <laughs> pretty much. 
anyway, so the water helps release things that are in the soil. And rice in particular, apparently, is also very, very good at taking up things from the soil. And arsenic is a naturally occurring thing. I don't know if it's an element. It probably is an element. I'm going to call it an element. I apologize if I'm wrong. Um, so arsenic is a naturally occurring element in the soil. But because of the way rice is grown and the way that rice um, is, it takes up a lot of arsenic in the soil, from the soil. That arsenic is deposited in the hull of the rice, which is why white rice does not have arsenic, because white rice is rice that has had the hull removed. However, <coughs> there's apparently also practically zero nutrition in white rice because the nutrition comes from the hull. Although, I thought the nutrition also came from the bran. And as far as I know, white rice still has the bran. So I don't know. I don't have all my information, <laughs> apparently. My point is, I think my point was that Dr. Furman's recommended protocol um, involves having high nutrient foods, nutrient dense foods, which would not include white rice because there's just not a whole lot of nutrition in it. Although I would think there's got to be fiber in it, you know, fiber, carbohydrates. It's got to count for something. I know that's not phytochemicals and stuff like that. But it's got to count for something. Um, here, I'll read. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but just to give you an idea, he made this um, nutrient density index, um, and he scored a bunch of different kinds of foods according to this. Okay, he calls it aggregate nutrient density index. So from whatever studies have been done about the nutrients in certain foods, he's taken the ones with them. Well, he's just rated them. So anyway, for example, and this is based on a scale of 0 to 1,000. So kale gets a score of 1,000 loaded with nutrients and I'm not sure where to find in here um, what all kale has in it um, you know what what the hell I'll read this uh, section to you but anyway before I do that so kale gets a score of 1000 watercress gets a scale of 1000 collards get a scale of 1000 a score score of 1,000. And at the bottom, okay, cola, so soda, has a one, some kind of nutrient in cola. Corn chips get a score of seven. Olive oil gets a score of 10. Low-fat cheddar cheese gets a score of 11. Anyway, just to give you an idea. And while I do eat a lot of greens, I have a smoothie every morning and it has either kale, cabbage, collards, or spinach in it. Nearly always. Every once in a while, um, I'll put like some arugula in it. There's one recipe in particular that I like arugula in because I still like my smoothies to be sweet. Anyway, I'm going to read this section because why not? Okay, so this says greens, the king of vegetables. As we have seen, 
And of course you haven't because I'm starting in the middle of the, <coughs> the chapter. Micronutrients are those nutritional factors essential for our survival and longevity that do not contain calories. Because they are not calorie contributors, they do not give us fuel or energy. We rely on macronutrients for that function. And the macronutrients are uh, protein, carbohydrates, and fat. I gotta blow my nose. I'm gonna pause this. Okay. Um, the key to superior nutrition then is to get adequate amount of micronutrients while at the same time not consuming excess calories. To get optimal amounts of immune protective micronutrients, we have to eat lots of vegetables. Fortunately, vegetables are relatively low in calories, so large amounts can be consumed without overeating on calories. Nutrition scientists have shown over and over that people who eat more natural plant foods, vegetables, fruits, legumes, are less likely to get sick. And yet I did, because I do eat those every day. Although not a great variety of vegetables, except for the greens. Okay, um, if we wanted to design a super immunity diet, we would want to know which foods had the most powerful effects. Then we could eat plenty of these foods each day, flooding our bodies with the protective substances contained within them. So, which foods have the most powerful effects? Let's add up the immune supporting micronutrients in a broad array of common foods and see how various food types compare. Later in chapter five, I'll give you a similar list for the top 25 superfoods. So anyway, besides the chapter five, he's referring to this, um, this list here that I was reading to you from where it says kale gets a score of a thousand. Um, as you can see from these nutrient scores, when it comes to immune system building micronutrients, green vegetables win the race. No wonder those are the foods most closely linked with protection against heart disease and cancer. A review of more than 206 epidemiological studies shows that the consumption of raw green vegetables has the most consistent and powerful association with reduction of cancer of all types, including stomach, pancreas, colon, and breast. How many green vegetables do you eat a day? Oh shit, my phone's ringing. Okay, gonna pause this again. Okay, so that was somebody uh, looking to adopt a kitten. A male gray kitten, which I happen to know about. Um, the sanctuary, I don't, th I don't remember if I mentioned Sundays I've been uh, volunteering at a cat retirement sanctuary in St. Louis um, because a, a client, anyway, I took five cats from a rescuer to this cat sanctuary, reaching out to a whole, reaching out to the, the community as far as I know the animal welfare community, this cat sanctuary said they could take them. Um, so five cats went there and um, because I was committed, am committed to getting those cats adopted rather than staying in a sanctuary, um, I would rather make room for elderly cats who need it you know, um, who need it more. These cats did need somewhere to go. <laughs> um, anyway, one of them is a male gray tabby. And, uh, yeah, that would be great if, uh, if the person's willing to, um, deal with him being sick. A lot of the cats there are sick. Um, it's, kind of just the nature 
of the of the thing. Um, a lot of cats who are sick get um, surrendered. Um, also, a lot of them are older, which often means that they are sick. They're more likely to be sick. Anyway, and the way that... Hold on. Because they had surgery on the way to the sanctuary, I picked them up from the rescuer, stopped at a vet on the way. They got their neuters in space and took them right to the sanctuary. So, uh, um, I did not know this before. I have learned now that anesthesia, when you get surgery, anesthesia lowers, lowers your body's immune system, compromises your body's immune system. So these cats went through that and they went through the stress of being somewhere totally different. And because they had to be quarantined because they were new to the sanctuary, they were all in cages for 10 days. And they were living in the rescuer's home, just like any other family cat. Having a great life, <laughs> you know. Um, so anyway, they got sick. They all got sick. I feel terrible about that, but one of the cats, one of the kittens got adopted by one of the volunteers. And since she's been in the home, in a home by herself, not living by herself, but you know, no other cat, since she's been removed from that environment, her congestion completely cleared up. Her eyes are beautiful and bright. She has no snot crusties. She has no breathing problems. She's beautiful. Beautiful, normal kitten. So I like to believe the same would happen for the others um, once they get homes. Um, boy, this was a hell of a tangent, huh? <laughs> um, but... Uh, so yeah, I'm encouraged. I, I didn't talk to the person. Um, it's kind of... Anyway, they left a voicemail. Uh, I will call them back. Um, so who knows? Maybe Tigger could have a home. Um... He's had his vaccinations. He's been neutered. Um, and he's so, so sweet. <laughs> he's a shoulder kitty. He loves to be up on your shoulder. But uh, when I get there, uh, the, the four cats that remain of this group that I took, they come, they come to see me. <laughs> when I get there on Sundays and I know I'm not the only one because I have I have seen Tigger approach another volunteer as well but still it's just so sweet and I'm glad that I believe I can provide kind of an anchor for them you know um, because I'm familiar they they knew me before they went there because I have visited the rescuer I don't know three four times um, to deliver food and litter. Um, so anyway, maybe he'll have a home. I don't know if this person will be willing to go to St. Louis 
to meet him. I would hope so. I'd give her, I'd give him a ride. <laughs> but anyway, so getting back to this super immunity thing, it's not like I've been doing bad because I have been eating those high nutrient uh, greens every day, every day. Every smoothie has um, three ounces of greens. Okay, now I share with my neighbor. So I end up with about two thirds of this smoothie. So two ounces of greens. I guess maybe that's not a whole lot. I don't know. Anyway, in the whole container goes three ounces of greens, um, more than three ounces of beans, um, uh, almost two ounces of some vegetable, whether that's celery, carrot, zucchini, cucumber, cauliflower, um, and then an ounce of nuts, an ounce of seeds, um, dates for sweetness, avocado for calories, because I lost a lot of weight. And I, I'm a small person anyway. Um, I think when I started this and I was eating a lot of salads because that's, that's what he really wants you to do is eat a lot of salad. Um, uh, I think when I started, I was 102 pounds and I'm not quite four foot 11, about 102 pounds. Well, I got down to, I don't remember if it was 89 or 84 pounds. And I was not comfortable with that. I felt fine. I felt good, but I mean, you could see my collarbone and I could see my ribs without putting my arms up and I'm and I'm thin up here anyway I'm heavy in the hips but I'm thin up here anyway and my spine has always been prominent but this was just like this is too much and when is it gonna stop when am I gonna stop losing weight <laughs> so I started adding more nuts and more seeds and and I was eating a whole avocado a day um, to get those calories up. I gotta blow my nose again. All right, so anyway, I have not been following this 100%. I've not been totally maxing out the super high nutrient dense foods. And, um, Maybe I would have gotten sick anyway. I don't know. But I haven't done everything that I could have that he suggests to prevent getting sick. So it is possible that because I haven't been following it 100%, I got sick. And that I wouldn't have gotten sick if I had been following it 100%. Anyway, I brought the book to bed with me thinking, all right, I'm going to read this again. And I really wanted, I really want to do this a hundred percent. Um, um, but yeah, I didn't even have the energy to do that. So I'm not sure how I got myself to get up and sit in the chair and do this <laughs> video. But I did. And uh, anyway, so that's today's video diary. I'm going to leave it there because it's, it's time to feed everybody. My neighbor was very sweet and uh, cleaned litter boxes again for me today and offered to feed everybody dinner. And um, I declined him feeding everybody dinner. Um, because I just, I kind of feel like I, I've got to get up 
sometimes. But the times that I have gotten up, it's like even going to the bathroom. It, it almost wipes me out. Um, anyway, so that's it for today. And I guess I will talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye.